Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. Today I'm going to show you how I set up a carp rod on the bank side. These are my preferences, just the way I do it, the way I've been doing it for years. It really does make a difference to have an efficient bank side setup. So let's have a look at those details now. So rod's been assembled, lined up the rings. Uh, I've gone with my standard uh, trick running lead system here with a leadless leader. Got the marker rod out. We've had a bit of a cast around. I found a nice little feature. I've just pulled the marker up to the back of that feature and then I'm gonna drop my lead onto that feature. Now let's have a look at how I go about setting up my carp rod for this spot. I've lined the marker rod exactly up with this spot that I'm gonna target. I'm then gonna put my rod in exactly the same position. So I'm pointing the rod exactly at the rig. So I'm gonna be setting up a, a pair of individual bank sticks here. So I've got a set of these uh, super lightweight aluminium carbon ones, which are great for uh, traveling light. When the going gets really tough, you can't beat a heavy duty set of stainless steel ones like this. First job, let's try and find somewhere to get the front bank stick in. I'm just using one of these bank stick augers here, which are a great tool. The ground's fairly flat here. I'm gonna put the 12 inch one at the front, nine inch one at the back. I like the rod to either be parallel to the water or a bit tips up. What I don't ever want to do is have the rod angled down like that. The problem is if you do that, if you're fishing a long distance or a very kind of shallow lake, if you get a take and the carp lifts the top, the, the rod up, you run the risk of the rod losing contact with your alarm. And if it goes left or right, it can pull it off the front alarm. Now, this isn't a problem if you're day fishing, etc. but at night, it could be a bit risky. What's really important for me is that that is in there solid. All right, let's pop the alarm on. Now I need to choose a spot for the back rod rest. So in order to position the back rod rest, I mean, getting the left and right is fairly easy. I just line it, line it up with a marker rod there, and I know my line is somewhere along there. Now, I happen to have uh, these um, bull peg retainers on this rod, so I could put my bank stick there, which is how these are designed to work. These are great features, but if you don't have one, I would always put it just at the back of the rod there. The handle is gonna stop that rod sliding forward and it's gonna be really much more secure. The other thing I need to pay attention to is how far away from the alarm my line clip is. Now I've got a line clip whipped on uh, 500 mil up from the reel seat here. So I wanna leave about 15 centimeters away from that. Obviously, if you have the line clip back there, then you've got more flexibility. I'm gonna use the ball peg today. So I'm gonna try and put a hole in here. The most important bank stick out of these two actually is the backrest. If the backrest isn't in really solid, you do the run the risk of the whole lot going over on a savage take from a carp. You'll see how strong this setup is. I'm giving that a, a fair degree of force, five, six, maybe even eight pounds of force there. It's not going anywhere. I could lock up that clutch really tight and the, the rod's not moving, the bank stick's not moving. So you can see how I've set this rod. Level wise, it slightly, it slightly tips up. And when you're fishing with it like, configured like that, the load from the fish is going to be more inclined to pull the tip of the rod down, especially with a back lead on. And if the tip of the rod's being pulled down, it's being pulled tighter into this uh, bite alarm as well. So it's going to keep the rod really secure. Yeah. Again, not an issue while you're day fishing, but at, at night, you know, if you have a savage take and it kites left or right, you know, if you if you don't have the rod being pulled down into that bite alarm, you know, it can come off the uh, come off the front there. Obviously you can put snag ears on and, uh, and additional things like that, but uh, it's just good practice to have it set up so that the rod is always being pulled down into the alarm. So now we've got a really secure pair of bank sticks. Let's put this out there, find that spot, clip it up, get a rig on, and then I'll show you how I set my bobbins. Uh, spot on that, right next to the marker. Before I set the line in the clip, I always hold the rod at a high angle because this is how I want to kind of land that rig on that spot. Always go a couple of times around that clip. I just whip that in. 
I always take the marker rod out before I actually put a rig in. This eliminates the risk of accidentally clipping the rig when I'm pulling the marker rod in and dragging the rig out of position, which would be a disaster, of course. Right, marker rod's out of the way. Time to clip a rig on. Uh, rather than use quick links, I've been using this very simple loop-to-loop -loop connection for years now, actually. And you really don't need quick links. Just tie a loop big enough so that you can pop the bait through. Neat, simple, secure, it's all you need. So my distance is all sorted because that line's in the clip. All I've got to do now is put it on the exact same line where the marker float was, which is kind of roughly in between those two um, silver birch trees on the far margin. Now, that's how not to do it, because I'm off by about four metres there. So easy enough to bail out of a cast that goes long, wrong like that. Just close the bail arm immediately, you know it's going wrong wind it back in and then the hook never touches the bottom that looks better hit the clip lovely beautiful smack between the trees exactly where that marker float rods rods at the same angle i've got a lovely little donk there so now i can take it out of the clip and i'm just going to clip a back lead on that as well I always want to drop the back lead exactly in line with the uh, with the rod. It's no good having it off left, right and centre because any additional angle that you add is just going to reduce sensitivity. Then I offer up to the alarms. I see the angle that the line's going down from the tip. If I want to change that a bit, just raise that rod and make it a bit, bit shallower. Slacken the clutch a little, not too much. Uh, rod goes securely on the back red, rod rest like that. We're on the front. Next thing I want to do is set the clutch. No matter where I'm fishing, I always fish with a semi-tight clutch. I'm not touching the rod at all. I'm actually having to wrap my fingers around that line in order to uh, pull line off the clutch. And you can see the clutch ticking just going to give it a good aggressive tug here yeah no issues whatsoever with that just wind that back on to take out any line twist that I might have added there yeah so it's really really secure that's going to help us in so many ways when the fish picks up the lead lead's going to help hook itself when it tries to move away it's the clutch that's really applying a, a good amount of hooking force on that fish when I walk up to this rod, bobbins at the top, etc., carps on, there's no striking. It's like an auto strike system, basically. All I do, wind down, lift into the fish, and he's very, very well hooked. Next, we can get the bobbin in play. If you always set your, your bobbin in a certain way, then you know if there's been any, any activity, if you're not watching the rod all the time. So I've just set that flat like that, Loads of range of movement to indicate a bite that way. And I'm fishing a running lead, so I'm not too worried about uh, any backdrop indication because there's not going to be anyway. Whichever way the cart moves, I'm going to get a positive indication because of the way a running rig works. We also get a secondary uh, addition to the kind of bolt effect with, this, with the use of this line clip. So we're going to get a take here. Bobbin locks up to the top. It's then going to ping out the clip and then we're on the clutch basically. If it pings out the clip at, uh, at, at night, there might just be a short flurry of bleeps. When I look at the rod, I know that the fish has pulled hard enough to ping it out that clip and I can do something about it because the bobbin's going to be hanging down like that. One thing I try and avoid if at all possible, and that's having an acute angle from the angle of the rod to where the bait is. I've set this up all wrong at the moment, Lines going off to the left, rod tips going straight out in front, and you're compromising bite indication. You're also running the risk of the rod being pulled off the front rest on a, on a savage take. It's always better to reposition the rod and point it more at the bait, if at all possible. This is why I prefer bank sticks over pods. Bobbin set, 
clutch is set, bank st sticks are solid, let's flick the alarm on and wait for that bite.